Good morning, folks. We've got a few solar eruptions to check out today. We'll also run down the top science news, stars, interactions, and the cosmological scale. Let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and we find the bright active regions on the south, dark coronal hole on the north. But trailing the coronal hole, there was an eruption of a filament. No solar flaring and the solar wind is calm, as well as geomagnetic conditions, so let's get a closer look at that eruption on the north. The pop is easily visible, but as we zoom in, we can further tell that the southern end of the filament ripped up and northward. This one is small and not headed at Earth, but as solar flares come back in the following months and years, the filaments will grow and erupt in various directions. Before the filaments snap up top, we see ejecta leaving the sun bottom left that is coming from an active region behind the limb and still turning in. While missing a few frames from the coronagraphs on SOHO, we do still see the eruption headed out that side. And looking from the side via stereo A, we see a few things. Earth is off to the right. Up top, you see the same filament pop. Its position change relative to before tells you where the satellite sits. And from the side here, it can see the bright active region, bottom left, that produced the eruptions leaving the south. Quick stop at Space Tech before we head out further for the science news of the day parachutes of the ExoMars lander. I am still dubious about a chute in 1% of Earth's atmosphere, but hey, best of luck, guys. Folks, yesterday we discussed the horrible science trying to cage in recurrent nova to the binary paradigm when we've seen various reasons we know there are other ways to work it. They know this is a polar view nova, but they think it must have been from a stellar merger because they don't see the binary. Yeah, it didn't have one. See yesterday's news if you missed it. The evidence on this is very powerful, especially since scientists on Earth have even modeled the equatorial ring and polar blast-out scenario quite a bit, even at our Sun and Earth. No binary needed, by the way. We are moving on to a deeper investigation of the dust structures around binaries that they can confirm. Interesting that these, they want to see the material blown away, Whereas in accretion nova, they want to see it suck in, but then sometimes they merge, if you'll recall, and they have no idea what they are talking about. So, let's go to cosmology where things don't get any better. Radio bridges. Watching them try to explain the acceleration and energy of the plasma connection without the plasma cosmology, and instead with gravity and dark matter, just tells us how challenged modern astronomy is to recognize basic features of plasma physics when they're at large scale. Every time they update their technology, like the Roman telescope is supposed to do, they are able to see further and in more detail, and instead of facing these conflicts with the recognition that their models and paradigm must change, they continue to try to make misfit pieces of a puzzle jam together. But glimmers of hope do emerge. Following last month's declaration by Nature that wimp dark matter was on its last leg, about to have its last chance, we continue to see scientists somewhat throwing in the towel. The Vera Rubin Telescope wins the Irony Award in astronomy. When it goes live, it will detail the low surface brightness of the universe and utterly debunk the namesake Rubin's dark matter theory once and for all. The scientists of the world are starting to see it too. You can feel it in their sentence structure. And folks, this has been one of our key drum beats since 2011, especially because Nothing else we show with the sun, climate, earthquakes, or the sun and earth's catastrophe cycle is possible without these plasma physics changing by the day. And yet, merely rediscovering what Birkeland, Alfane, and Peratt have done. Now the two former aren't around anymore, but luckily the latter is and he's a friend. Folks, below the video is a link to our plasma cosmology movie. If you haven't seen it, there's over a dozen professors in that one, and at around 43 minutes in, Dr. Peratt delivers one of the most devastating explanations in the history of science. And now, over a year later, we've seen dozens following suit in theory and discourse, even if not so brazenly as Dr. Peratt. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out the Plasma Cosmology on our website or our channel homepage. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.